you do not have to work in cybersecurity to get experience. You can get experience by doing cybersecurity projects. Today, I'm going to show you how you can do a cybersecurity project for free out of the comfort of your home. Employers love to see that you've gone out of your way to try and learn something new. It sets you apart from everyone else. So don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll have instructions on how to complete a vulnerability management project. And I'm also gonna chuck in some links to some free training too, that you can complete and get some certificates and post it on your LinkedIn and CV. And this is typically what employers like to see. They like to see certificates, backed with actual experience and projects that you've done, as well as being able to market and brand yourself properly. This applies to so many different markets and sectors and every company that you can think about that does this to some degree. Try to create something useful that you can learn from and be able to add as a project you have completed onto your resume, onto your LinkedIn. So just before we get into it, just a couple of quick disclaimers. Firstly, you need permission for whoever owns a network you will be scanning or the devices that you will be scanning. Scanning anything without permission is illegal, so you need to be very careful with the scope of your scans. Make sure you get permission if you don't own the network or devices. Secondly, I did this project just on my MacBook Air. However, you can apply this to Windows, to Mac and Windows, to Linux, to whatever devices you have around the house. This applies the same way. The only difference is you might have to select Windows instead of Mac when you're downloading specific software or agents. Now the boring disclaimers are out of the way, let's get into it. So I'll start off by giving you a quick overview. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be conducting vulnerability scans on our device. So in this instance, it's just going to be my MacBook. So this is going to determine what areas or weaknesses exist on my MacBook what a hacker would target if they was trying to hack me, what things need to be updated and patched or Maybe if I've got something misconfigured or I need to update my system because of the security patch that was released, these vulnerability scans will pick that up. So the purpose of this whole project is to learn how to use the vulnerability scanners and how to fix the issues as well and to secure the devices in your environment. Now we will fix some other stuff too and I will do a full write-up in the description below as well so you can check it out there. So how this started there's the first thing I did was I signed up to Qualys. Now Qualys is one of these popular vulnerability scanners. There's another one called Nessus, which we'll actually be using in this video too. But to begin with, you need to Google Qualys, go to their website, sign up. I'm not going to go through the sign up process step by step, but yeah, what I will say as well is you do need to have a professional email. So if you don't have one of these, one way I have seen people get around this is by buying a cheap domain and using an email from GoDaddy. Not that I'm suggesting that, it's just a method. I've seen people use to get around this. So once you've signed up to Qualys, we need to understand what the scope of our project is going to be. Now for me, it was my MacBook Air. You might be scanning two or three devices or just so on. Whatever it is, you need to understand what that's going to be. Now, the reason being is because we're going to be downloading an agent. So there's two types of scanning we're going to be conducting. The first one is called cloud-based agent scanning. So how this works is we download a agent, which is a piece of software essentially, to your MacBook or to your Windows device, to your endpoint. And then you also have a instance for you created in the cloud. And once these two are connected, normally there's a reference key or some sort of code, or you can download the agent directly from the cloud pool, whatever it may be, depending on what tool you use. Once they're connected, you can, through the cloud instance, control these agents. Now, if you imagine this across hundreds or thousands of PCs and work computers in a professional environment, this is how it will work. So we can use it to run scans, you can use it to react to things. Agents can do a ton of things and there's different offerings within Qualys themselves. But here we're just looking at the vulnerability scans. So once you have the agent installed on your laptop, you need to actually launch Qualys vulnerability scan. But what I do suggest is you do some of the basic training that they have so that you can learn this. I'm not going to give you the full tutorial, but I will include all the training references in the description. Personally, I just did like 20 or 30 minutes of their training and then I just played around with the tool till I figured it out. I have used Qualys before a couple of times and dealt with Qualys. It has been a few years, everything has changed, but I like to get hands on and mess around and figure out how I can get the scan kicked off. But if you're struggling with the scan, do the training. Trust me, it will just save you a lot of time. 
Anyway, after my scan results come back, as you can see, there were 17 confirmed vulnerabilities, which is crazy. These obviously fall into different levels of severity, but these are actually quite bad. Qualys have their own way of ranking stuff and you can choose to view vulnerabilities in different ways, but essentially these are high and critical vulnerabilities that need fixing. So yeah, I needed to make a start. So the first thing I did was I needed to update to the latest version of my operating system, which was Mac OS Sonoma 14.4. And going through the update, you have to accept the usual terms and conditions and enter your password, all that good stuff. While I was waiting for that to install, I started to have a look at some of the other vulnerabilities that I had. TeamViewer was one of the vulnerabilities. Now I've used TeamViewer for remote support purposes in the past. And essentially there's this older gentleman that used to help with some IT stuff. I used to remote into his machine and take over and help him out with some basic IT stuff. But anyway, I haven't done that in a while, so there's no need for TeamViewer. But this is a thing, it reminds you of things that you have on your PC when you do a vulnerability scan. Because there's stuff I've had that I've just not used in ages and I've just been there. Anyway. In the back of my head, I was thinking that should delete TeamViewer. And while I was trying to decide what to do, I got the notification that I need to restart my computer because of my operating system update. So I went ahead and restarted. Once I restarted, I decided to look through the applications that I have installed. Because I thought this is a good time to just clean up, delete as much stuff as I have. Because the more software you have, the larger attack surface you have, the more vulnerable your computer can become if it's not maintained. And then I got to a weird bit that kind of broke my heart a little bit because my runescape launcher rune light and i haven't played runescape in a long time and i love that game but i've kept this because someday i wanted to go back but for now i know i'm not going to touch it for a little while so let me just delete it and it was a very difficult thing to do but i got it in the bin along with a few other things so as you can see i did actually get rid of team viewer audacity as well which is like an audio recording software thing that i sometimes used in the past but not any time recently. GitHub desktop where I was messing around with a few labs and pushing some things to GitHub. But yeah, I'm not going to be using that for a little while. So I deleted that too. And once I was deleting it, one thing I wanted to do is run one of our PC cleaners. So this is like an extra piece of software that essentially deletes all the dependencies and all the other packages of those files that can be found elsewhere in your computer. So it's just like an extra thing to help delete some more rubbish. So what I wanted to do firstly is just run a system scan to see what junk files I have, what I have on my PC. So not only have I completed the Qualys Cloud Agent scan, I've also completed a system scan using this cleaning tool. And after I've tidied up, I've cleaned some stuff out, I've deleted quite a lot, I wanted to try and kick another scan off, just to test that if the scan would pick up the stuff that I've got rid of. For example, the team viewer vulnerability, it shouldn't be there. I haven't got a team viewer anymore. So I was trying to figure out how to kick off another scan because I've completely forgot. Because again, I didn't really do much of the training. I think I'd done one session and just played around and explored and tried to figure it out by using the software. So while I struggled to figure out how to kick off another basic vulnerability scan, I checked on the progress of my cleaning software and it was doing pretty well. So the cleaning software completed. I managed to get rid of nearly two gigabytes of junk files, which was great. But now it was time to check on my scan, which was running and that was all going smoothly or at least I thought. So while the scan was running in the background, I decided to take a look in a little bit more detail at the vulnerabilities. And what I'd realized is most of the vulnerabilities are actually Microsoft vulnerabilities on a Mac. I actually downloaded the Microsoft suite on my Mac, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all that kind of stuff installed on my Mac. And it comes with this package .net or whatever it's called. And it's this whole bloated, rubbish that it all comes with typical microsoft but anyway i couldn't get it off i was trying to figure out where this stuff was and to be honest with you i struggled quite a lot with this part of the project so what i decided to do was i was trying to figure out how to update it i went online i opened up the software the vulnerability was still showing i couldn't understand how to actually update microsoft on a mac on a Windows PC, this would be pretty straightforward, but on a Mac, I was struggling with it. So I thought the only thing I can do is just delete everything and reinstall it. I know it's time consuming. There probably was a quicker way, but I just couldn't figure it out. And I didn't really want to spend time researching. So I just thought, let me just delete it all. Delete Edge, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, 
all of the Microsoft applications and just start again. But when I've done that, as you can see, there's a deep installation that my cleaner tool actually helps me with. So I was, I was using that too. And once I deeply installed all of them, got them all in the bin, what I thought was the mistake I made in the past was that I downloaded the Microsoft stuff from the Microsoft website their official website, and it was hard to keep up to date. However, if I downloaded it from the app store, then at least then when the app requires an update and it recognizes it as an app downloaded from Apple's app store, as opposed to a piece of software downloaded from a website online, I would actually be able to update it from the app store, at least in theory. I didn't know if this would work or not, but I just thought that kind of makes sense. So I went to the Apple app store, I downloaded Word, Excel, all the tools that I needed. And I later realized I kind of messed up and made a mistake here because with Microsoft Edge, firstly, you can only download it online. I don't think I could find it in the App Store. And secondly, browsers normally automatically update as soon as you open them. So if you've got a vulnerable browser, it normally means you just haven't used it in a long time. And I only really use Edge for the Copilot AI, Bing AI partner, whatever it's called these days. I quite like that because I like my browser to have a bit of intelligence and AI, but I can't use it full time. I still really love Safari. Anyway, so I got Windows Edge downloaded and I thought I'd check out the vulnerabilities one last time and I'd take a look at how the scan was going. Now, if you remember, this is the scan I wanted to kick off to check the progress of how my project was going. And I realized that the scan wasn't actually working properly. I'd launched the scan wrongly anyway. Then I got a random thing about restarting my computer, which is I think is because of all the random stuff I've been deleting and installing and reinstalling and whatever else. So after I restarted my computer, I went back onto Qualys and I was looking at the Microsoft.net vulnerabilities, which is the only thing that was left. So all I could see was the Microsoft issues. The team viewer stuff had gone. The other applications I updated, everything was clean. I just had one problem, the Microsoft.net core, which really confused me to be honest, because I'd already deleted all the Microsoft stuff and reinstalled it using the Apple's app store, but I still had the vulnerabilities because there was some software some part of the application I hadn't deleted, and this is their .core.net, whatever it is. So I thought, let's break out the terminal and try and find it this way. So the first thing I did was I looked online and I looked at the Linux file structure just to try and figure out where this Microsoft.core would be sitting, because Mac is based on Linux and the file structure is very similar. So I pulled up the terminal, I asked ChatGPT to help me out, to point me to the kind of file path where it will be, and in my head, I thought, I'm just going to explore. Now, this can be done very easily. I didn't use any complex commands. And I was going back and forth trying to figure out where this was. And honestly, I was struggling to find it. And to be honest, I spent a decent amount of time on this. And I still could not find the Microsoft.core.net issue. And I was starting to get a little bit frustrated. And then I thought to myself, maybe it's just a false positive. What if this Microsoft.net or .core vulnerability or software doesn't actually exist on my Mac and Qualys is just stuck picking up past stuff or something like that because that can happen you can get false positives so I thought best way to do this would be to download Nessus and I can use Nessus and scan my computer and if it also picks up this Microsoft issue then it's definitely there somewhere and I need to keep digging deeper however if it's not there on the Nessus scan I can call it a day it's a false positive I've confirmed it by using another scanner. I've looked around and I can't find it. And it was so annoying because everything was patched. Everything was sweet. I had no vulnerabilities left to work on on my PC other than this Microsoft.net.core thing. So I went over to Nessus. They've got a really good free version. So I set it up. I downloaded it. I, of course, gave it some fake details. I call my account Nessus Laptop Macaroni just for the hell of it. Once you've downloaded Nessus, it takes a lot of time for all the plugins to install and compile and whatnot. So to be honest, there was not much I could do in this period other than sit on my hands. But once it was done and I was ready to launch my first scan, I was so excited. I went onto it, typed in my target as a local host, which basically means a machine that you're scanning from. And the vulnerability was not present. So I was so happy. After all of this effort, all of that pain, I realized there was one basic thing that I didn't do. I didn't actually open up 
any of the Microsoft.NET or .core or .NET core vulnerabilities in Qualys and look at the remediation information because there's often quite a lot of information about how to fix the issue, where it is, etc. So as I did it, it took me to the exact file path I was trying to look for before when I pulled out the terminal and I did feel like an idiot. I felt like a numpty. At the same time, I was happy that I'd found it. So I navigated towards it and I managed to delete it and get rid of it. And thank God it was done. And then I'd ran a couple of last scans just to make sure. And yes, everything was clean. So yeah, that was essentially my vulnerability management project on one laptop. Now you can imagine if you've got a company and you've got dozens or hundreds or thousands of laptops to manage how complex this is. You have a lot of tooling that makes this very easy. Tools like SCCM, Microsoft Intune, a bunch of others. I think VMware have one too. Then it's the same as well for your phone too. Your phone has an operating system and it also has applications that need to be kept up to date. So when you think about a corporate or business device, this will also need to be managed and protected too. And a lot of companies and a lot of places need to do this for their own best practice or security to become better at security. Another thing is, you also have security standards and certifications such as Cyber Essentials, Cyber Essentials Plus, PCI DSS actually mandate that you should not have vulnerabilities on any of your devices for you to be compliant past a certain level. So for example, with a Cyber Essentials scheme, if you have a vulnerability that is equal to or greater than a CVSS score of 7.0, then you immediately fail. You haven't got the certification your customers start pulling out because you're not secure anymore. However, if the vulnerability was only discovered within the past 14 days, you do have that grace period. But what happens essentially is this creates a mandate for a company to have to patch, update, scan, verify, to keep up with these regulations, with these security and privacy certifications, and there's loads. Some will just say you need to do some sort of vulnerability management some will be very prescriptive as we've just described and say, no, you need to do this and that's it. Otherwise you fail. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. This is kind of my walkthrough of the vulnerability management project that I've done. I've got some instructions, some links to the Qualys training and also the project write up in my Notion page below, as well as a ton of other resources that I'm constantly updating and chucking stuff into. So yeah, check that out. If you've liked this video, Please support the channel, like, comment, share, and subscribe. So I'm going to be doing a lot of different types of cybersecurity projects, giving you some great advice, walking you through what you need to do, and building stuff together. I'm really looking forward to it, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.